Hey everybody. So unfortunately, a lot of people suffer from headaches, migraines, tension headaches, whatever it may be. And unfortunately, I don't believe that the, the current way that the system is set up, which is basically just giving ibuprofen, other medications and neurology workup, that kind of stuff is doing a lot of justice for the patients who have chronic headaches. And so I see quite a lot of patients in my clinic who are suffering from chronic, chronic headaches and the medications aren't doing anything. The ibuprofen doesn't do anything. They've been cleared by the neurologist. So there's no weird tumors or masses in their brain or anything like that causing, you know, those symptoms. And so they're kind of left with this. Here's some medications. Let's try you know, some different types of medications and just go from there. And so I'm gonna walk you through kind of the thought process that I take with my patients who are coming to me with whether it's chronic headaches or chronic migraines. And hopefully that gives you some insight into how you might think about your current situation. So the first thing that I wanna say is just like people walk around saying that they have sciatica when they likely don't, but they might, but they likely don't. A lot of patients will walk around saying they have migraines when they don't actually have migraines. And I'm not saying that if you're watching this and you have migraines, don't take it personally because you might, you might actually have migraines. But what I typically find is that 50 to 60% of my patients who come into the clinic who say they have migraines I do a physical exam on them and the findings that we get are going to show that it's coming from an, a musculoskeletal or orthopedic condition. And when we end up treating that with prolotherapy or PRP or whatever we choose, those symptoms go away and the migraines are gone and the headaches are gone. And so the, the classic symptoms of a migraine are people, you know, are going to need to be in a black, you know, a dark, dark room. It can't have any noise. There's some, usually some nausea or there could be nausea associated with it, but it's really intense and it puts people out. Some patients will have tension headaches where they get pain, you know, from the back of their skull that kind of comes up and sometimes it comes over into their eyes and then they'll, they'll still be able to function, but it's uncomfortable, but they'll say that they have migraines. And, and so I think it's just important to understand that there's differences in what we call things because that's going to frame up your mind and how you're going to approach these things. So getting back to how I, how I approach these things. So the first thing that I look at when a patient comes into my office is musculoskeletal causes. Okay. What that entails, and we have my lovely little model here, what that entails is I want to look at the facet joints. Now the facet joints here are the joints that are in between each level of the vertebra. So they start all the way up, actually at the, uh, the base of the skull. Here's your C1 and C2, that's the first level. They come all the way down into L5, S1. So there's a facet joint for in every single level. Those facet joints allow movement between each vertebral level. So it allows you to do flexion, extension, rotation. It creates a stable pillar, but allows you to do movements. Those facet joints can commonly become inflamed with some mild arthritis in them. You can get some irritation of the joint capsule. When that happens, that can radiate pain into the head, into the shoulder. Commonly the upper cervicals, so basically C4, C3, C2, C1, and then the, the OA joint, the occipital lantern joint, those can will refer up into the head and then it's more common for C5 downwards to refer into the shoulder. But sometimes patients will have C5, C6 or C6, C7 facet arthritis that refers up into the head like a migraine or like a headache. And so that's the first thing that we're gonna wanna do. So if you're at home, if you notice that your neck hurts when you look upwards, which when you do that, that's gonna compress the facet joints. If you look upwards and that creates some neck pain, that could mean your facet joints. 
if you look up and over to the side and that makes it even worse on either side, then that could also indicate that you have some facet joint issues that could be contributing to your headaches. And so the facet joints are, are one of the first things that I look at. The other things that I look at are going to be is the suboccipital ridge. So the suboccipital ridge is if you are, are on your skull and you go down and then you feel where the bone ends and then you get into the into the muscles, that's your suboccipital ridge. There's a lot of fascia and muscles that attach on that area that with poor posture, with car accidents, with falls and other traumas, we can get some irritation in that area because of degeneration, but also some neurogenic inflammation. There's a lot of nerves that come from here, deeper from the spinal cord, that then come up and over top, mainly the greater occipital nerve and the lesser occipital nerve, and those are gonna actually connect with the supraorbital nerve. So the supraorbital nerve comes out here, it comes up, to about midpoint on the actual, on the head, and then it's gonna actually, it can connect with the greater occipital nerve from the posterior aspect. So if you have headaches that either start in the back and wrap all the way around to the eyeball, or start in the eyeball and wrap all the way around to the back, the, another place that I look is gonna be the greater occipital nerve as well as the supraorbital nerve. When we have those nerve-related issues, we can use 5% dextrose, which is our perineural injection therapy, and we inject it along those areas and we can get a significant reduction and we've actually eliminated headaches in a lot of people. And so those are kind of the big three areas. Again, as long as the patient's been, you know, space occupying lesion in the brain, those types of things have been ruled out. On the orthopedic side, those are the big things I look at. I look at the facet joints, then I look at, and I look at all these together, but the facet joints, the suboccipital ridge, and the tendons and ligaments that are attaching there. And then we look at the nerves that are coming from the skull and wrapping over superorbital nerve, greater occipital nerve, lesser occipital nerve, those types of things. If all of those come back as negative, then I start to look at food triggers. So there are some foods that people eat that can trigger headaches and migraines, and some people may not realize it because it might be a food that is not classically known to you know be an issue um, especially if you're talking in, in today's society so it's not always like a dairy gluten or corn or soy or anything like that some patients will have uh, we've had some patients react to blueberries and when we, when we remove blueberries from their diet their headaches go away other patients are really sensitive to the chemical dyes the you know the red 40 and the blue 32 or whatever it is it sounds like football but um, but the dyes that are used in foods can sometimes be triggers for patients headaches so those are the kind of the the big camps there's other things hormones can contribute uh, gut health can contribute but the big 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 things I look at are the musculoskeletal causes and then if all those are ruled out then we look at food triggers all right everyone hope you enjoyed hearing how i think about headaches migraines and all that kind of jazz see you later